So, Pandora. Oh, I think I have a mic. So I'm coming down here because you're all too far away. You're like, oh my gosh, she's coming. I am. And I think I'll stand right about here. How's that camera play? How's everybody doing? Oh, no, I came all the way from California. Come on. How's everybody doing? Are you having a beautiful day? Are you inspired? Well, I just want to first start by appreciating and thanking everyone that has made it possible for me to be here. From Andy and all of the people organizing this to just everyone who has supported me and a lot of the people who couldn't make it, but who I hope to share their stories and inspire and talk a little bit about what we are doing in the United States. Again, and please forgive me, I'll be standing down here and then kind of referring to my slides. My name is Pandora Thomas. I work with Earthseed Consulting and also the Black Permaculture Network. Now, I will be talking to you, but also there's going to be a little bit of interaction happening as well. So has anyone ever seen this image before? You know what it means? Someone say it. What is it? To return. To return. So everybody say it me, Sankofa. So a lot of the work that I have the opportunity to do around the environment and sustainability is specifically with communities from multiple cultural backgrounds. And so for me, rooting myself in a concept such as Sankofa, which means go back and fetch, fetch it or return, is really important. Because for a lot of us, it's not just about moving forward towards something, it's actually about reclaiming. And not just for a lot of us, for all of us. And so how we're actually going to start is I'm going to ask all of you is to think about whose shoulders do you stand on? Who has inspired you to show up in this room, to be committed to permaculture, to sustainability? I'm going to share a little bit about people that are my ancestors. They're no longer living, but they could still be living. Who is that person that inspires you, has inspired you? I want you to bring that person to your mind, and then I want you to turn to your partner next to you and to share a little bit about that person for one minute each. <coughs> Go. Person, I'm, the shoulders I'm standing on is sitting up there. <laughs> He's the man. Eh? He's the man. He's the man. I love it. Okay, and if you haven't, you should turn. The other person should begin sharing. If you haven't switched partners yet, please do. On whose shoulders do you stand? Okay, maybe take one more minute. I love it. I'm seeing hand motions and head nods and y'all getting into this. Maybe 30 more seconds, wrapping up. The best part is you can find this person after the talk and share more later. Twenty more seconds. Ten. 
seven, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, finishing up, two, and then one. Wow. Now actually, let's take a deep breath in. And breathe out. How's the room feel now? It feels a little more crowded. <laughs> we have a lot. We have our legacy in the room. And for me, this concept that we talk about permaculture design is about that. How are we all reclaiming something that is a part of us? It's not outside of us. It's who we all are. A little bit about some of the folks in my photos that I'll put. I'll actually talk because of time. And sometimes I usually have people share out their stories, but because of time, I can't. Um, does anyone know who the person in the far right, your right, my right corner is? The woman? Nope, that's not my Angelou. She's Harriet Tubman. Anybody know what Harriet Tubman is known for? Underground Railroad, anything else? She's a you from Auburn, New York, too. Yeah, I'm there, yeah. Oh, okay. So she's like from near where you are. So the Underground Railroad was responsible for in, uh, freeing thousands and thousands and thousands of enslaved Africans. But when we talk about Harriet Tubman, and actually when I learned about her growing up, and I was super inspired and excited about the environment, do you think anybody ever talked about her as a sustainable person or an environmental leader? Do you think? No, 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 no. She was talked about more as she led this Underground Railroad. But let's think about this. This is the South. First of all, she was born onto a farm, a farm, a homesteading farm. And it was only her relationship with the forest that enabled her to design the past that she needed to help get Africans who were enslaved to freedom. So she understood the food. She understood what was growing. She had a relationship with the land. But she wasn't talked about that way when I was raised, so I wasn't able to see sustainability and her story related. So a lot of times for me, growing up, it wasn't relevant. <laughs> However, if somebody had made those connections and connected the dots, it would have made, salute, a lot more sense. I don't know if anybody else has had an experience like that where sustainability or the environment hasn't been relevant for you. Also, does anybody know who that person in the bottom right corner is? Peanuts. George Washington Carver, and I get it because we're from an international group. So he's accredited with a million uses for the peanuts. But again, and this is a lot of US history, people do not talk about the fact that he built his entire laboratory re using recycled parts. This is the early 1900s, 1900s because he wanted to talk about things like earth care, people care, and fair share. Sound familiar? He wanted to talk about the triple bottom line. And how in the South, how can we rebuild the soil, but also figure out how to take care of the people and also share the resources. So again, I had to go back and fetch those stories. I had to make those relevant, because that wasn't the current meme when I grew up. And so part of my journey is, again, how to create relevance in my own life so that I can see myself in the movements that we're a part of. And specifically, when I got turned on to permaculture, again, it was that moment of, hmm, how can I make this more relevant for the people in my community, for the people that I'm in touch with, and even for the people in my family? Has anybody else had that question? Trying to figure out how to make it relevant. You could say something. I can hear you. Anybody else that had that experience? I'm from the black church. Uh, um, and when the black church, we do something call and response. So you can go like that or be like, yeah. Just let me know that you hear me and you feel me. <laughs> I'm being real. So everybody loves to talk about principles in permaculture. And for those of you that haven't studied permaculture necessarily or have your PDC, talk with me later because it's based on ethics, but it's also rooted in these ideas of principles. And the one principle that everyone likes to quote is, the problem is the solution. The problem is the solution, Pandora. The problem is the solution. So many of us living in California and actually committed to the work around <coughs> incarceration who are really turned on and passionate about permaculture wanted to put permaculture design to the test to see, okay, if this idea really is true, 
let's see if permaculture design applies to one of the biggest problems actually facing us in the world today, but really facing us in California. And it's really impacting all of you who live in the UK. And actually, could you raise your hand, Nicole? Where is she? My friend Nicole is doing some work right now on it. Find her. She's talking about abolition of the prisons and everything. But y'all need to know what's happening right now. I'm going to share a little bit about California, but a lot of this stuff is happening right here, right around where we're at right now, too. So the problem, specifically in the United States, is that the people who are getting incarcerated, the pattern of who are getting incarcerated, 60% of those are called communities of color, which is African American, Native American, Latino American. This same pattern has impacted my family, and it's taken off. Now, are people of color 60% of the United States population? No. Are we 50%? No. Are we 40%? No. We're barely 30%. And are we doing 60% of the crime? No. I didn't hear you. Are we doing 60% of the crime? No. So if you want to debate that, we could talk later. So there's definitely a pattern around who's showing up being incarcerated that is not in alignment with reality on the ground. So that's a problem that actually some of the people in California who are leaders are trying to tackle. Jerry Brown, who was our governor, due to a lot of lobbying and force from a lot of organizations, came up with something called the public safety realignment. Because the idea is, not only are there a disproportionate amount of people being incarcerated, the same pattern again show up in, showing up in my family, but there's not even enough beds to house all the people. And it's way too expensive. So this idea of public safety realignment, how do we take people who've done nonviolent offenses from prisons, put them into jails, and then release them back out into the community. And again, this is the idea of nonviolent. I don't know if it's the same here in the UK, but this is one of the ideas. So again, the problem then is that there's tens of thousands of people returning back to California, but into a broken system. What might be broken about what we call reentry? Anybody? You can't find a job. You don't get as many services. People don't trust you. You're profiled. You're still seen as guilty of whatever you did. You're dealing with all the, anything else? Or didn't, or didn't do. You can't get loans. It's hard to get education. It's hard to even engage politically because you're on parole, which if you don't know what that is, you could talk to me later about that too. But you're really trying to figure out how to reintegrate into a system that probably already had tears and breaks in it that you left. So the problem, tens of thousands of people released into a broken system of reentry. Again, wow, can permaculture speak to that? So that problem, coupled with what Brock Dolman, I just want to present him, he's one of my teachers and my inspiration, he calls global weirding. Actually, I want to add one more problem before this, the problem of recidivism. So when people do get out, 60 to 75% of people go back in right away. So just keep that in your mind too. So that problem of all these people coming home and we don't want them to go back out, and then this idea of global weirding, if that's the problem, what might be the solution? <laughs> you read my book. No, seriously though. Tens of thousands of people coming home, the problem is a solution. What's the solution? Get people working to heal the environment. Tens of thousands of people are coming back into our communities. You get it? I can't do the thing back, but you know, the problem is the solution. Now, the problem, we only see them coming back into our communities when we are separate from them. But when we see them as coming back into our communities, and we give them what I like to call the Mandela welcome. Remember when Mandela came home? That's the slide. It was like 15 minutes or so after Mandela came home. What was the world doing? Yeah, Mandela free and singing and dancing and understanding that no matter what happened, he served a time and there was a level of welcoming him back into our communities, wanting to learn from what he had gone through, wanting to understand. So that's the opportunity, the potential. When people come from this experience and come back into our communities, that's when it becomes a solution. So we wanted to design a system, an experience that could put permaculture design to the test to see if when these folks come back home, is there a way to really fulfill the potential, to really create a solutions-based permaculture design experience for men and women reentering our communities. And so can I show you the video? Yeah. So I present to you Pathways to Resilience. Hit the video.
dude. Coming together today with the participants, the community, the staff, we are all equal. And so starting with that intention, again, I welcome you to the second cohort of Pathways to Resilience. and natural systems and learning from those natural systems to design our lives. Well, permaculture, uh, going up to Merritt College and a lot of things that he taught us, dealing with the earth and the growth process of it, you know, I took that and applied it to the growth process with myself. I've learned a lot about nature. I've learned a lot about plants and I've learned a lot about life itself. Just like the plants grow around the earth, the weather comes, everything in a cycle, you know. And I'm trying to get back on that track of that cycle. I want to do the do the farm thing, you know what I mean? You know, get everything going right. That's something that's, that's in me on my other side of me. You know? I got one side and I got another side, you know what I mean? So that's my other side. Really, it's just about growth and like really, you know what I mean, being able to just dissect the situations that you've been in and, and find that information. The biggest highlight of this program is that I've learned a lot of prim culture. I learned a lot about um, eating uh, healthy. Oh, I'm a Samoan, so our culture is we eat a lot of uh, unhealthy food. Growing your own foods is the best thing to do. What surprised me the most is like, I never thought I was gonna take a shovel and start digging <laughs> into, the, into the soil. Like, oh my God, am I really doing this? But it was like, I really actually liked it. I didn't know that the dirt had different like three different soils, like, you know, clay, rock, sand. It was really fascinating to me. When we had a program like this, like giving formerly incarcerated people a, 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 a permaculture design certificate while working out some of the trauma, while giving them tools. in the social enterprise of how to okay, right use, there. you know, all of this stuff that's learning. How can these resources be gained for, for folks that are formerly incarcerated that's coming out home, a community, before they get out to the real community? I need someone, you know, to help me grow in my process. You know, I have grown up, you know, with this permaculture program. I met great people, great resources, and, and that's what Men and women like myself, that's what we need those type of resources. We need those type of people in our lives. Well, I'll say the highlight has been the social enterprise class. I'm starting my own business, so being able to have a head start on that and being able to use the tools that is being taught in that, in that course. My favorite part of the program was social enterprise. I got a lot out of it made me unleash my potential and it made me bring me out a little bit to hear my voice. I learned a lot from here, you know, it opened a lot of doors for me. And now that I have my foot in the door, my other foot go find the rest of the round of the house. Doing whatever it takes to get back on the right track since I, I was last incarcerated, uh, came home and I want to be about something positive, uh, mingle and coexist with people who are positive. That's why this pro program is important to me. I was able to be introduced to a whole lot of incredible people um, and I was able to build networks uh, also with those with those folks. You know, I'm just willing to learn and try something different to help better myself and be reintegrated back into society with a positive outlook. If I was still incarcerated, there, there'd be no way I could be an intricate part of my family, to my community. I would be no help to anyone. And today, all that has changed because of Pathways to Resilience. For what I am today, shame on my past. Uh, but shame on me if I remain that way. I would like to see more women inmates come out and have a resource that they can grab hold to. Celebrate. Celebrate.
no, no, no. For me, personally, I like the way that uh, they bring community together. My journey from the beginning to now, it's, it's really been a growing process for me. I learned a lot. I learned a lot because this really helped me understand more about life. This is the pathway to resilience. Maybe not today, but tomorrow. But we graduate, and man, I am as excited as I was because I'm getting a certificate I can put in a frame. What I think about this program is opportunity. You know, every time I think about it, you know, just the, the skills that I'm able to learn, you know what I mean? Thinking about who, who am I going to meet today, what am I going to be able to pick up from them. And I'm looking forward for the graduation, but mainly I'm looking forward to, to be the, the alumni part of it. Let's all gather together. My name is Augustine Kelly. My name is Regan, and I'm the peer mentor for the second cohort of Pathways to Resilience. My name is Julie Walker. My name is Linda Candelaria. My name is Lawrence Walker. My name is James. My name is Wilmer Osborne III. I go by my Muslim name, Sadiq. My name is Rachel. My name is Minister Calvin Lawrence. My name is Victor Blanco. Hi, my name is Keisha Evans. Well, my name is Philip Byers. My name is Douglas. I'm Tyann Bowens, member of Pathways to Resilience. emotional because it was actually two years ago in Cuba. Yeah, see, you crying. I can't look at you. Um, in Cuba, sorry, not because you're not cute, but you're crying. When we kind of launched it to the convergence there, and now it's been two years, and so just to watch it in a room with everyone um, and the lessons that we've learned. And again, I'm not presenting this because I want all of you to go off and start a reentry program for men and women coming home from, prince, uh, from prison. But I think there's all this potential of making the connections and the links, and specifically around the social piece. Where are those opportunities? And all of us have access to them. And so how can we start to design and map that out? And I wanted to share just a little bit of the impact of our program, um, other than what you saw in the video. Again, there was four components, the permaculture course. We had a, a woman doing case management. So again, housing, food, all that other shenanigans they was dealing with. She was trying to help them deal with that. Green life circles. Like Regan said, how do you move through trauma? Even trauma around our relationship with the earth. You know, because that's, that's real. And then social enterprise, this idea of if no one's going to hire you, then what are you going to do? How are you going to start something, fill a niche in your community? So we had over 90% of the participants complete the program. Um, 85 of them obtained new employment. Now, were these jobs at permaculture firms necessarily? No but their lives have transformed, they see things differently, so they've gotten work and taken those principles and that idea and that way of living into it. Um, they have better housing, increased access to food. All of the participants remain free of new convictions or violations. And then lastly at the bottom, improved interpersonal relationship. Because a lot of what gets a lot of people wrapped up and caught has to do with some relationship stuff that has to do with personal experiences and history and histories. And so to see that they had improved interpersonal relationships, you heard it. They got it. This idea of relationships, not just the relationship to your water catchment system, to your roof, you know, but these relationships, the relationships to each other. So I'm really excited to have been able to share this with you. I leave you again with where are those areas in our communities, in our lives, that we can start to make the links, start to make the connections, so that permaculture design can truly fulfill and live into its potential. Again, I'm Pandora Thomas. Thank you. Have a beautiful evening.